Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, I'm going to look at a CPA question that's covered in the FAR section. And this CPA question is covered in my advanced accounting. To be more specific, this is where I teach this topic. And the topic is intercompany sale of depreciable assets. So the student looked at the question, actually looked at the answer for the test review preparer, and they could not follow uh, the, the answer. And I believe the student is competent, just it's a little bit, this question is a little bit tricky. So I'm going to take in this opportunity to, to explain this uh, topic uh, to that student as well to everybody else, so everybody else can benefit. As always, I would like to remind, I'd like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have over 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, and Excel tutorial. For example, intercompany sale of depreciable asset is covered in my advanced accounting i have right now 100 plus advanced accounting lectures so if you are taking advanced accounting or if you are studying for your cpa exam you might need some additional lectures some additional exercises to strengthen your knowledge i'm not saying i substitute your cpa prep course i don't i supplement your cpa prep course i don't substitute your college course i supplement your college course so this is how i can help please connect with me on instagram if you like my recordings, please like them, share them, and again, subscribe to the YouTube. And on my website, this is what I was talking about earlier, I do have an advanced accounting course. And once you subscribe, advanced accounting as well as 10 more, and once you subscribe to one course, you have access to everything. And I have a lot of resources to pass the CPA exam. For example, if you're looking for FAR, I have a CPA uh, course for Becker, Wiley, Roger, uh, Sargent, and Glime that supplement all these courses. So I strongly suggest you check out my website. Let's go ahead and take a look at this question so we can dive into what we need to learn about today. So we have Port Inc, which is the parent company, owns 100% of Salem Inc, which is the subsidiary. On January 1st, the parent company sold Salem a delivery truck at a gain. What does that mean? It means they had, a, they had, a, they had an asset and with the book value of $50, and they sold it, let's assume the book value for the for the asset was equal to $50. Let's make it 60, you know what, let's make it 60. If the book value is 60, so they sold 475. Now what does that mean? It means if they sold 475, they had a gain of $15. But remember, this gain is between P and S, which is parent and subsidiaries. Okay, so let's make sure we are aware of this. So this gain is an intercompany gain. P had owned the equipment for two years and used it for five years using the straight line depreciation with no residual value. Okay, Salem, the subsidiary is using the three-year depreciation rate with no residual value. So simply put, the, uh, the, the asset has, for the parent company, for the parent company, it had five-year life. They used it for two years, minus two. So when they sold it, it was three years left. And coincidentally, coincidentally, the subsidiary are going to be using three years as well. So simply put, the asset will have a life of five years between the parent and the subsidiary. In the consolidated income statement, Salem's recorded depreciation expense on the equipment by year one will be decreased by how much? They're already telling you that somehow you have to decrease your depreciation on the consolidated financial statement and how much it's going to be decreased by. Now, the easiest way to look at this problem is to kind of use numbers. So let me use some numbers. Let's assume and let, let's use some numbers just to illustrate the concept. You could use any numbers, but I'm going to use a set of numbers. So let's assume the parent original cost was a thousand. That was the original cost at the parent company. You could use any number you want to. Now, they, they were depreciating this asset over five years. So if we take the cost with no residual value divided by five, it means every year they were depreciating the asset $200. Year one, 200. Year two, 200. Now what they did in year two, they sold it. So if we have $1,000 minus $400 of accumulated depreciation between year one and year two, we have a book value of 600. We have a book value of 600. So this is the book value. Now they sold it to S company. And you could use any numbers and the problem would work perfectly fine. And let's assume they sold, let's make something divisible by three. Let's assume they sold it for $690. So they sold it. So the sale was for 690 
minus the book value of 600, the parent company will have a gain of $90. So they sold it and they have a gain of $90. Now, what happened to that gain? Well, that, that, that's a gain for the parent company. But that gain, what that gain did, increased the cost of S company. So the gain on the parent company, so S company, Salem company, now their cost for that, for that asset is six hundred and ninety dollars not six hundred because they paid ninety dollar more the parent company will have a gain but it's an intercompany gain so now S Salem company will have to depreciate this asset over a life of three years so notice the original depreciation let me highlight the original depreciation so this way let me pull the calculator because I'm gonna need the calculator so let's have a calculator fixed here so the original depreciation was two hundred dollar per year now when we take 690 Salem company and they're going to depreciate it, depreciate this asset over three years so we're going to take 690 which their new cost divided by three it's going to be two hundred and thirty dollars per year so every year so year three year four and year five two thirty 230 and 230 it doesn't matter it's this way they depreciate the asset over three years but they're asking us for year one alone okay so for year one alone the question is how much do we need to reduce depreciation by what happened is when we have an intercompany sale we have to act as if because it, it went from the parent company to Salem company as a result we have a, a gain that needs to be eliminated but we also have additional depreciation that needs to be uh, reduced as well so they're asking us about the depreciation so simply put what do we have to do well we have a gain of ninety dollars as a result our depreciation increased by 30 why by 30 because because the increase in cost so let me just highlight the increase in cost uh, in, in a different color so here's the here's the increase in cost the increase in cost now why did I choose 690 I could choose any number I could just want it to be divisible by three because it's over three years so that additional dot additional ninety dollars would, would would increase our depreciation expense uh, by thirty dollars at Salem company now this is year three but for Salem it's year one this is what we're being asked about so what's gonna happen is we have to reduce our depreciation by one-third of the gain why one-third of the gain we need to reduce our depreciation by thirty dollars for year one out of ninety dollars so every year we're gonna book less we're gonna reverse back out thirty dollars of depreciation because it's booked on Salem company books 230 is supposed to be only 200 therefore we have to reduce the depreciation by 30 which is we're gonna take the gain and allocate it over three periods year three year four and year five every year we would reduce it by 33 and one-third which is 33.33 percent which is the amount of the gain now once again if you used 690 or if you used you know ten thousand dollar you take ten thousand minus six hundred whatever the gain is then you have to um, reduce the gain by one third every year and that's what the question is asking about and this is a very very important concept um, if you could understand this it means what do you need to understand here you need to understand what is a gain how do we have a gain well we have a gain when the asset is sold more than the book value that's fine that gain is intercompany gain what does that mean it means the gain will need to be eliminated which we did not talk about this here because if you want to you can go to my website for additional lectures but here they're asking us about the depreciation as the result of the gain Salem companies depreciable base increase well that increase in depreciable base increase the depreciation so simply put the depreciation will have to go back as if we never sold the company which is 200 it means every year since we have three years left we have to reduce the depreciation amount by the one-third of the gain why the gain because the gain is what increased our depreciable base so this is basically if you understand this the steps that i went through now you understand the logic and you would understand why we need to reduce it by 33.13 33 and one third of a percent which is 33.33 as always i'm going to go back and remind you and invite you to visit my website a topic like this is covered heavily in advanced accounting again i have over 100 different lessons the difference between my offer what i offer and what a cpa review offer is something like this 
A CPA review course assumes you know all of this. So when they reviewed, reviewed it with you, they don't explain it in detail. That's the difference between my product and the CPA course. And this is why individual that individual sent me the question because they could not follow. And obviously this individual is not a subscriber to my website, a subscriber to my YouTube. But if they were a subscriber to my website, they'll be able to look at many questions. Anyhow, um, again, please, please like the lecture if you like it, share it, study hard for your CPA exam and stay safe, especially during those coronavirus days.